Hi everyone, my name is Ben Zamzo and this is a guest lecture to introduce week 11. So in this week we're going to think about information and insurance. So now, so far in the course we've thought about markets where everyone has all the relevant information. Now we're going to think about what happens when there's imperfect and asymmetric information. So imperfect information just refers to the situation where buyer, buyers or sellers, or both, uh, are not perfectly certain about the quality of the good or service that's being traded. Additionally, we can have a situation of asymmetric information, and that'd be where one side of the market, buyers or sellers, have much better information about important aspects than does the other side of the market. So asymmetric information can actually be a big problem. It's illustrated in a paper from 1970 by George Akerlof, who won the Nobel Prize for this and other contributions. So take the advantage of the used car market. Suppose sellers know the value of their car, whether it's good or bad, but buyers don't observe the quality of individual cars. Instead, buyers just guess the quality of a randomly selected car based on their beliefs about the distribution of good and bad cars. So if I think there's a lot of good cars in the market, I'm willing to pay for a random car almost the price I'd pay for a good car. But not the whole amount that I'd pay for a good car because there's a chance that the randomly selected car actually isn't very good. Now if I think there's a lot of bad cars in the market, well I'll pay a price for a randomly selected car that's much closer to the price I'd pay for bad cars. So a problem arises where if buyers are willing, the price buyers are willing to pay for a random car is less than the price sellers of good cars would accept for their cars. So then you get a situation where there aren't any good cars in the market. So then the price I'm willing to pay for a random car is just the price for a bad car. Now, if I could observe a good car, I would pay full price for a good car, but I can't tell them apart. And knowing this, the sellers of good cars just leave the market and keep their cars. The problem is the very presence of bad cars in the market can destroy the market for good cars. So there's a lot of different things firms try to do to overcome these problems in the used car market and in other markets. They might offer a money back guarantee, so that's a signal of quality, or offer a warranty, meaning that they'll fix the good for a period of time. So there's things that sellers try to do in order to reassure buyers. In the market for insurance, there's related problems of asymmetric information. There's a the problem of adverse selection and the problem of moral hazard. Adverse selection is a problem that occurs before the transaction. It's basically that bad quality is overrepresented. So in the financial market, adverse selection occurs where bad credit risks are more interested in taking out loans. In the used car market, adverse selection is where there's more bad cars available to buy than good cars. In the insurance market, it's that riskier drivers and less healthy people are more likely to want to take out the insurance policy in the first place than are safe drivers and healthy people. Now, moral hazard is a different problem. It's a problem that occurs after the transaction. It's the idea that afterward, the customer doesn't take the full range of precautions. In the insurance market, it's like a driver being less careful because they know they're insured. So there's different things insurance companies can do to mitigate these problems, like have a deductible or a co-payment, so that the insured individual does have to pay for something and therefore has a further incentive to be safe. Well, anyway, you want to be sure to carefully read through the assigned chapter reading and pay special attention to the precision of the definitions and trying to understand and clarify our basic concepts, as this will serve you well in the course.